Thanks for joining this training session on following up on Sales Engine MQLs, specifically talking about how to convert MQLs into first appointments. But before we can talk about how to follow up on MQLs, we first need to understand what MQLs are. MQL is an acronym that stands for Marketing Qualified Leads. These aren't sales qualified leads where someone has an approved budget and an active evaluation looking at vendors, but rather marketing qualified, meaning these leads have had some level of engagement with your content and they match the demographic profile of someone who could buy from you. It's important to remember that not all leads are created equal. There are a lot of vendors who will sell lists, name, phone, email address, and call those leads, but that's a far cry from someone who fills out a form to talk to a sales rep or get a quote or see a demonstration of your product. That's why your follow-up approach needs to match the type of lead we're talking about. You see, for purchase lists, the prospect has zero level of engagement. That means your approach is cold and interruptive, where you rely on generic phone and email scripts. If it's a contact me lead, well, you know what to do with those. But when people click through in your content, they're telling you something. They're not telling you that they are in an active buying cycle, but they are telling you what topics they're interested in. And if someone searches the web, comes to your site, and fills out a form to download your content, well, that's a whole other level of engagement. You know exactly the topics they're interested in, and they likely expect a call from you, but it requires a different approach. The point is measuring lead quality is not a binary question. There are good lists and bad lists. There are good contact me leads and bad contact me leads. Measuring quality is more about being effective as a sales rep and having the right approach for the type of lead you're following up on. So what are sales engine MQL leads? Well, we know they match the criteria we've previously agreed on job level and function, company size, industry, and geography. We know that they've filled a form, or if they're a repeat visitor to that form, they've clicked to download your content. We know the topic they're interested based on that content download. What we don't know is if they have budget, authority, need, or a time frame. If they're not a banted qualified opportunity. We also know that 5 to 10% of MQLs convert into first appointments under two conditions. First, they have the right kind of follow-up. And second, they have the right cadence for that follow-up. You see, busy people don't waste time downloading content. But they're also hard to reach, and they may not want to buy anything from you yet. According to InsideSales.com, following up on MQLs requires a process that mandates 8 to 12 contact attempts using multiple modes of contact in order to establish meaningful conversion rates into appointments. So let's follow that logic through to the end. We know that sales reps make 1.7 to 2.1 attempts before giving up on leads. We also know that it takes 8 to 12 attempts to be successful converting those leads. That means you need to execute a well-defined process that ensures you're doing enough to be successful. The process we follow at Sales Engine and we know works is the 814 follow-up plan. One day after a new marketing qualified lead is created, we'll place a phone call to that prospect, referencing the content they downloaded and the email we're about to send. Then we send an email that references the content they downloaded and the voicemail we just left. It's this combination that we find so effective. Three days later, we'll repeat that process. Three days later again, and seven days later again, for a total of eight touches over 14 days. Let's take a look at the results from following this 814 plan. Internally at Sales Engine, 10.6% of all of our MQLs convert into first appointments. And it takes on average 5.42 touches to convert. But as you can tell by this chart, where we measure the inflection point at which these MQLs convert into first appointments, that it's all over the board. There's only one case where the first call actually resulted in a conversion into an appointment out of 50. Most took several calls, several emails before converting. But the bottom third maxed out at 8 because that's where we measured the 814 process. And it wasn't until follow-up of website visits, email interaction, or other content downloads after the initial 8 touches that these prospects actually converted into first appointments. Okay, now that we've identified a process to follow, let's talk about the messaging and what you actually say to these MQLs when you do establish contact. So if we assume that it's going to take eight or more touches to establish contact, and we also know that it's likely 
This prospect is not yet shopping for vendors, rather they're researching content. You'd better not blow it by starting out the conversation talking about you. Why? They don't care yet. Remember, we know that sales engine MQLs match the job function, job level, industry, geography, and company size of someone who could buy from you. That means you're not disqualifying sales qualified leads that aren't yet ready to buy from you. You are selling to marketing qualified leads to someone who has a problem you may be able to help solve, even if they don't know it yet. So how do you sell to an MQL? First, establish a connection and credibility. Be a valuable resource for them in their research. To do this, you need to give more than you take. Regularly share your content, but also third-party content. And let their interests in that content steer you to their high probability pains. And then mine for pain around those content topics. Do this with great open-ended questions, talking about how these topics impact them and their business. Quantify that business impact and explore how that impact spreads throughout their entire organization. Once they've admitted this, and you can quantify that pain, ask for an appointment to discuss how you can help, and you'll know what to do from here. All right, some quick do's and don'ts for following up on MQLs. First, do assume that this lead cares, in fact, about the topic of the article they downloaded. Don't assume that they actually want to buy anything from you, at least not yet. Why? The point of this entire exercise is to start a dialogue with prospects who could potentially buy from you and you can help, even if they don't know it yet. Number two, do reference the requested white paper came from a partner site, but don't be creepy and get roped into some silly debate with them about how do you know and where do they get it from. Remember, these prospects downloaded the content from a third party site, not your website and they know darn well you're a sales rep, so they're going to be suspicious. Don't allow yourself to fall into this trap. And number three, do mine for the high probability pains that you can solve based on their content interests. Don't qualify this lead as though they're already in buying mode with an approved budget. Remember, you're selling to someone who may not yet be actively looking at vendors. And back to the upper right, The point of this entire exercise is to get in front of more prospects who could potentially buy from you that you can help even if they don't know it yet. Remember, to be successful following up on Sales Engine's MQL leads, you need the right cadence and the right message. Execute a plan that includes 8 to 12 touches per lead using a multimodal approach. Combine phone with email, voicemail, and even social media. And when you do establish contact, give more than you take. Add value to their research by sharing yours and third-party content. And based on the content they consume, mine for pain with great probing questions based on those topics. With that, I wish you the very best of luck following up on Sales Engine's MQL Leads.